lecture, we're going to cover the following. Classes, attributes, and methods. Self-parameter. The difference between functions and methods. Instances of a class. Attributes of classes and instances. And lastly, decorators inside of classes. So what is OOP? Well, OOP is short for Object Oriented Programming and is essential for any programming language. OOP works with objects and everything in Python is an object. So objects can be a book, car or person and is composed of methods and attributes. So say we have object one is a cat and the methods are meow, purr, jump, eat, the kind of actions you'd associate with a cat. So methods are essentially the doing or action of the cat object. And then with the attributes, we have color, size, weight, age, name, and so on. And the attributes are essentially the description of what the cat object is. And then with object two, we have a tank, and the methods are shoot, reload, drive, and so on. And then the attributes are color, size, model, and speed. Now classes help to keep all the methods and attributes organized for an object. Okay, so let's create our very first class. It's gonna be very simple. What we'll do is class C1 colon, and then we'll have some class attributes. So we'll have X equals, let's say 2.5, then Y equals, let's say, star, so we have a string, and then Z equals 900. So we have a, a mix of different variables here, a float, a string and an integer, and they're all class attributes. Okay, so I'm about to do C1. When this is it is, I get this strange output here, and it's double underscore main, double underscore dot C1. And from now on, I'm just going to refer to this as main to avoid saying the double underscores. So main dot C1, what is this exactly? Well, if we were to do, let's say, a function here and when a function is inside of a class it's called a method we'll just call this let's say check and print let's do I'm inside the class and also I'll do def outsider prints I'm outside well that's okay so if we just take a look now dot tab you can see I have check MRO which we'll look at later X Y and Z so we have a class attributes and we have two functions here which are actually methods okay so if I were to do let's say check you can see I have function main dot C1 dot check and the reason for this particular arrangement is because check which is our method is defined and created inside of our class C1. And C1, likewise, is defined and created inside of our main. And main is a scope where we define any kind of objects. So if I were to do, let's say, outsider, of course, if I just run this with a parentheses, I get, of course, the output I'm outside. But if I do about it, I have similarly to what we had before, we have function main dot outsider. That's because the outsider function has been defined directly in the main scope. And the main scope is the Jupyter Notebook kernel here, where we're defining any of these classes, any of these functions, any object at all within Python. Because remember, everything inside of Python is an object. Okay, so let's say I was to do D1 equal to C1 and also D2 equal to C1. And what we've done is have two instances created, and instances are actually objects. So if I do just left tab, left tab, and hold the control button at the same time, then print, and we'll do, let's say, C1, and then put this to D1 and D2 if we want. Okay, so what we have here is class, so main.c1, but then we also have main.c1 objects in both cases here, in a particular location of memory. And that's because D1 and D2 are also objects, and these are instances. And to create an instance is called instantiation. Okay, so we take a look at D1 and D2. So D1.tab, you can see that I have 
X and Z, but I don't have the MRO, and I'll look at that in a moment, and then we have the check method as well, just like we have with D2, the exact same arrangement here with the same class attributes, and we have the method. All right, so what I can do is to say A, I'm going to get, excuse me, that should be X, 2.5, then Y, the star or string, and then Z is 900. Now, if I do A, let's say I have, let's do 200, and I'll do D2, let's do B equals, let's say a list, and let's say D2 dot C equals, let's say, cat. Okay. And if I do D2 dot tab, you can see that I have A, B, and C, which are the instance attributes, as opposed to the X, Y, and Z, which were the original class attributes of our class C1. Okay. And they're not found, of course, in D1. You only have the original class attributes and the method check. So let's say I was to use a built-in Python function called is instance. And if I do D1, C1, I'm going to get a Boolean output of true. Just as if I were to do D2, get the same output of true, because D2 and D1 are instances of C1. They were derived from the class C1. But if I were to do, let's say, the integer 10, I'm going to get false instead. And that's because, of course, 10 was not defined as part of being C1 or class. But if I do int, I get true. And if I had to change this to float, of course, I'm going to get a false. But if I do, let's say, 2.0, I get true. And let's say I was to do d2 dot b. Of course, I'll get a false. But if I do list, because list is a class, you can see I get true here. All right, so moving on from that, I can actually do c1 dot tab, you can see I have MRO. So let's take a look at this. You can see it's function c1.mro. And MRO is something we'll cover actually in a future lecture for inheritance. But what it means is method resolution order. And if I do parentheses, I just get main.c object. And that's because, of course, the c1 class is an object as well, just like d1 and d2 is. All right. And just like I can with D1 and D2, where I can actually add new attributes, I can do it here as well. So we'll do toy equals, let's say, car, and c1.toy2 equals robots, run that, c1.tab, you can see I now have toy and toy2, so we do toy2, we get robot here. All right, so moving on from that, let's say I want to recreate my class one. But this time I'm going to add also a doc string, just like you can with a function. You can describe what a function is, but you can also define, describe what also a class is. So this is my first class. And then we'll have, let's say, def, that can be, let's say, cool self this time. It's the self parameter we'll touch in a moment, but for now, for in range, let's just do two, something really simple, print i, and also print end of loop. Okay, and if I want to do c equals c1, run that. Now if I do c dot cool, run this, I get, the, of course, the output of the loop, 0, 1, and end of loop. Now if I want to do it with c1 directly, dot cool, I'm going to get an error here, a type error. And what it says is missing one required positional argument self. So self is the parameter that's referring to the class C1. So what you need to do is put the instance of C1 inside as the parameter. And there you have the output. Alternatively, if we get rid of the self, and I run this, and then I do this, I'm going to get an error. But if I get rid of the C, you can see that it works, but if I do c.cool, I get an error here. So normally we have it this way when we're creating instances, and all I'm going to do is self. Okay, 
and now this should work. And I'll, of course, I have to put in the C here. Okay, so let's say I was to just take a look here. We have a bound method, and that's because the C instance has the function cool, which is a method bound to the instance which was derived from the class C1. Whereas if I were to do c1.cool, I get function. What this means essentially is that the function, or rather method, cool, is directly called from C1 class, whereas with the C instance, it has to be called via the class C1. And that's why we have a bound method c1.cool. Okay. Now, I can actually add, just like with a attribute, I can add a function into a class or into an instance. So we'll do, let's say, def greets prints, hi there, and then I'll do, let's say, c.func1 equals greets, and also do c1.func2 equals greets. Okay, and if I do c dot func one, I get hi there. And similarly, if I do c one dot func two, I also get hi there as well. Okay, and if I take a look without the parentheses, I get function main dot greets, and that's similar to what we had before with the outsider, if I recall. And outside, as you can see. It's exactly the same arrangement here. And similarly, if I were to do C dot func1, you can see I get the exact same structure here. Okay, so moving on from that, let's create an entirely new class. It's going to be class C2 colon, another doc string. This is my second class. And we're just going to add three methods for now. And that's going to be def person. And we'll have self x equals 300 colon print I'm let's see, plus string x plus years old. I want to do print as well just to make some space there. We'll create two more methods. It's going to be, let's say, outsider, self, name. And that would be print is an outsider, dot format, name. And then lastly, def insider. That's going to be self, name equals Peter, print is inside the class dot format name. Okay, so we'll just start with these three methods. We'll add two more in a moment. And if I do C equals C2, and also if I just take a look at C2 and hit Shift and Tab, you can see I have this is my second class, just like we have with any kind of function. All right, now, I do c dot person on this. I get I'm 300 years old. Of course, I'm not actually that old. And similarly, if I do c2 dot person, and I of course have to put in the c instance, I get the same output here. Okay, and I can change this, of course, to let's say 450, or if I want to with this one, I can do let's say 26 or 27, I'm 27 years old. All right, and let's take a look at the other two methods that we have. And they are C dots outsider. And of course, if I run this, I'm going to get an error because I have to define the name. Let's say Mike, Mike's outsider, but if I do C dot insider, of course, the name is already defined. All right, so let's say we want to 
create a decorator. But before I do that, I'm going to actually create a function called square. So square, and it's going to have self, of course, and num, pretty standard really, return num squared. And then we'll do our decorator, so decor1, and that's going to have self, then func, and then we'll have to print decorator1 inside of a class. And then we'll do def, it's going to be, let's just say check args quags, and then we'll do, let's say, f equals func args, just like before, quags. Then we'll have a full loop, so for i in range f, print i, and we'll have statements equal to the final value is, and then we'll do return statements. And lastly, return check. Okay, so we're going to go about using our decorator. And we're just going to remove these two methods. All right, so I'll do C, before we do that, let's do C dot. You can see I have the square, if I do three, of course, I'm gonna get nine. Now if I do D equals C dot decorator, then we'll do C dot square. Okay. Decorator one inside of a class. If I do D, let's say free, it's going to be for i in range nine. You have zero to eight, where the final value is nine. All right, and lastly, let's say I want to create another function. So cube num, and we'll have return num cubed. Okay. And then I'll do c dot func equals cube. And then I'll do d2 equals c dot decorator and c dot func. Well, that's and you have decorator one inside of a class, just like before. And this time it's going to be a fair bit longer the output. So d2 with the same number of three, it's going to be 27. So three cubed or three raised to the power of three is going to be 27 so you get zero all the way to 26 with the final value of 27. okay so that concludes my lecture on the introduction to classes and methods i hope that's been insightful and in the next lecture we're going to be covering initializing objects if you have any questions feel free to ask in the q a thank you